Have you been sleeping in your car? Yeah. Do you use cannabis products? Hello lovers and welcome back to Travel Snacks. So today I'm going to be talking about how Canada hates travel snacks and didn't want to let me over the Vancouver border. All right, I'm being super dramatic. But today is a story time about how I did truly get detained at the Canadian border. Since I'm documenting my car life journey, I did film me driving up to the Canadian border and I got to the guard gate and it was still recording. So although you can't see the guard, which is good, because I don't know if that's illegal, I did get our conversation on video so you can hear our conversation. Now, in all fairness, I probably should have thought this through a little more when I was going up to Canada. I've been to Canada plenty of times, but in the past, I've gone to the East Coast. This creeper is walking up to my car with his dog. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Every time I've gone to Canada in the past, I've gone to the East Coast, to Montreal or Toronto, and I've taken a plane. So when I go to the area where they do passport control and stuff it's always at the airport and they do question you and stuff but it's a little bit more common sense and easier to get through now this time I'm driving in a car and I didn't really think about it the first thing she asks me is to roll down my back window and as soon as she did I was like shoot like she's gonna see that I have all my blankets and stuff in the back seat which is not a problem but I wasn't prepared because I'm like I wonder how does that look well apparently that doesn't look too good when you're trying to cross into the Canadian border because they're probably like yo you trying to flee the United States and come live in Canada I mean not a bad idea with all the politics that's going on but definitely not something that I would do so I can see how it kind of looks but Let's listen in and you guys can be the judge of the of the questioning. It's funny because I know me and everybody else that knows me knows me enough to know that I'm like such an honest person and I just have a whimsical I just have a whimsical travel lifestyle and so I don't make plans. I just go for it and I just let God guide my way and you can't really answer questions to a border patrol agent that God is guiding my way. I mean, you could, but like that's not like really official answers that they're looking for anyways let's just like listen in to hear what she asks me bro there's like literally a mountie behind me on his horse is it a mountie it's definitely a horse oh for real somebody's on his horse it's canada i made it in by the way but let's talk about the story Hi. Hi. Could you just roll down the back window when you get a chance, please? Uh, yes. Where do you live? California. Hold on, let me, you want to pull that shade down? So the very first thing she asks me to do is roll down my back window. I guess that's probably to see if there's anybody back there or if you have any contraband or whatever, but she's literally going to see that I'm kind of living in my back seat. Not a problem, but also doesn't start off the interview very well. Uh, you live in California? Yes. Are you coming from California right now? Um, I just came from Washington, so I've been driving a few days. Okay, and what were you doing in Washington? I'm just doing a road trip from California to Vancouver and back. Okay, why? Just to, I've never been to Vancouver, so my first time just checking it out. How long are you staying in Canada for? Probably like two days. What do you mean probably? Um, well, I'm just gonna get an Airbnb and just look at the sites and stuff. Okay, okay, I know how this looks like from her point, I'm like, I'll probably be there two days, maybe four, maybe seven. I don't know. I just know I need to get back by Thanksgiving. But on their end, they're like, how long are you staying? Are you just going to stay here like two days, two months, two years, and then never leave? So I get why she's asking that question. But as a traveler, sometimes you just go where the wind blows you. Do you have reservations for an Airbnb? Not yet. Why not? Because I don't know anything about Vancouver yet. So I'm going to okay, go. So why are you coming here? She's like, why are you coming here? I'm like, why does anybody go anywhere to like explore? Now, of course, some people have business meetings. Some people have friends where they're going, but there's a lot of people that are just simply traveling just to travel, just to see things like ticking things off their bucket list. I mean, as a country, I get that you want to find out why people are coming into your country, but also as a traveler and as somebody that has a travel YouTube channel, 
And also like so many people are having like different blogs and vlogs, books, articles. People are doing all sorts of traveling things where you just kind of go like a nomad. To explore and visit. So I'm gonna go to Stanley Park and the like the bridge and I looked up some of the so sites. 99% of the people that I talk to uh -huh. when they're traveling from such far distances, mm -hmm. typically they make reservations and they have a place to stay where you, where uh, where they're going. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, not understanding why you didn't make accommodations prior to coming to Canada. Okay, she did ask me where I'm staying and I did say Airbnbs because I was a little embarrassed to be honest when she was asking me where are you staying and I didn't know if I was going to get in trouble by saying living in my car because Okay, the story continues, but if you want to know more, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and just give it a quick like. I mean, this is a great story. There's rules and regulations, you know, you can't just be sleeping any old where. And in my mind, I didn't, couldn't really think that fast to think like, people can camp. Like, people do just come to other countries and go camping at campgrounds and like different places and they go on hikes and stuff. But at that moment, I was like, I guess I'll just like, at that moment, I was just like, I'm staying at Airbnbs. So of course, the next line of questioning is why haven't you made reservations which totally makes sense now i wonder if i would have just said well i'll be sleeping in my car what would have happened but i didn't want to like take that chance and also i might stay at an airbnb one or two of these days but probably not i, I mean this car living has been totally fine but you know i don't know i'm just trying to get through this interview mm -hmm. so i'm uh, not understanding why you didn't make accommodations prior to coming to canada I don't know the area, so like if I want to stay like closer to like a certain area, I don't know how big Vancouver is. Okay. Some of the questions, I'm a very honest person, so I was like, I don't know where I'm going to be staying specifically because I don't know about Vancouver. I don't know if I'm going to want to stay near the water, in the forest. I don't know if I'm going to stay on the street. I don't know if I'm going to stay near a park. I mean, how's a person, sp I mean, you got Google, so of course you're going to look stuff up, but like also, what if I legit do want to get an Airbnb. I could just pick an Airbnb, but what if I get it and then I want to stay somewhere that's clear across the other side of Vancouver? Then I've just booked myself into an Airbnb. So I don't think it's unreasonable to say that you don't have accommodations. I think I might be maybe an exception because a lot of people do like to have plans, but there's people that don't, like me. Have you been sleeping in your car? Yeah. Why? She says, have you been sleeping in your car? And I'm like, yes. And she says, why? <laughs> which totally falls in line with every other person that has basically said, why would you do that? Are you crazy? What are you doing? But to me, I'm like, what do you mean, why? Because it's saving me a lot of money and why not? Do you use cannabis products? No. Any firearms or weapons in the car? No. Alcohol, tobacco, or cannabis products? No. Are you meeting anybody here? No. I find it funny that right after she asks me, why am I sleeping in my car? She asks me, do you use cannabis products? And then she asks me the standard, you know, do you have any tobacco, cannabis, or alcohol? And then she's like, are you meeting anybody? Not my drug dealer, that's for sure, because I don't do drugs. Her line of questioning was right on. She was very professional. I do understand why she was asking all those questions, but I, like, it's so funny to me because I logically understand why she's asking these questions, but I'm also like on my end going, but also like, you don't know me to know that I'm literally just taking a road trip and I just want to see Vancouver. I want to try restaurants and I want to like, just explore. I didn't have specific answers to the questions she was asking. I have a wanderer spirit. Probably didn't help my cause. Go to the stop sign, stay to the left, the officer's gonna show you where to park, and go inside to the A lineup, please. Okay. Thank you. And so then you just hear her ripping the paper off, like, yo, girlfriend, your answers do not satisfy me. So she's like, pull up you're gonna have to get out and go in. Okay, so I pull up to the parking space and the other guard was like, okay, get out of the car and hand me your yellow piece of paper. So I was like, okay, now at this point I turn off my camera because I'm like, okay, this is getting a little official. So I don't have recordings from this part, so I'll just have to tell you the story. I get out of the car, I hand him the paper, and there was like this little like other guard box that I thought he was in, like going into, and he's like, okay, follow me. So I follow him, and then he gives me back my passport, and then he's like, okay, you're gonna have to go into the building and then get into line A. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, well, let me roll up my window. Because if you remember, I had to roll down my back window. And I told him, let me ro roll up my window and also let me lock my doors. And he's like, you don't need to do that. And I was like, all my stuff is in there. All my camera gear, my computer. He's like, I'm the safest thing. And there's nothing going to happen to your stuff. I'm out here patrolling and I'm just going to watch this. And I was like, bro, calm it down all the way. Like, you are not the Terminator here. So he kind of rubbed me the wrong way because he's trying to be all tough. I get what he's saying because it was just like a line of cars. But also there's other people that are getting pulled to the side and walking in. Now, I'm sure he wouldn't let anybody get into my car, but still, you just don't feel safe just like leaving all your goods in your car. And, and I wasn't able to take my phone in there because they allow no cameras and no phones inside the building. Like you can't film anything. You can't use your cell phone and stuff like that. So my phone was in the car, everything. And so I just felt like a little bit like naked without all my stuff. So all I had was just like my regular purse with my ID and my passport and stuff. So I go in the building, I get in line. There was two people ahead of me. One couple was at the desk talking to one of the agents. And then there was another lady in front of me. The people that were at the desk were getting questioned. And of course, of course I was ear hustling. And basically from what I gather, I think that they had some kind of like weed residue or weed or something to do with cannabis because I was hearing some things about substances and they were trying to explain it. I think like a mother and a son. So the mom's probably like, boy, what did you do or what did you bring in here? I don't know. It's funny because back when the lady was questioning me, I get that like on the West Coast, it, I, it dawned on me that, that like Washington and California both have legal, legalized pot. I think Oregon too, but I don't know. I'm not like all into that. I understand why when people come into Canada, they're probably like, is everybody bringing in, oh, my other light just went out, so it's gonna be a little weird on the color. Anyways, so they're probably like, is everybody bringing in cannabis products to Canada, which I totally get. So anyways, they were having their interview and I was waiting in line. Then the other lady in front of me, this other guard pulled her to the side and was questioning her. She looked like she was about to cry. I was like, what is going on here? I was just like, whatever, I have time. But I was also like, why well, I have to get pulled aside? Finally, it was my turn. I go up and the guy was like, okay, so from what I understand, you are coming into Canada, you don't know for how long and you don't have any accommodations. And I was like, that's right. And at that point I had time to think. So I was like, okay, so just so you know, I am vlogging this trip. And he's like, vlogging? And I was like, you know, YouTube. And then he's like, oh, okay. And I said, so I'm basically going up the coast and I'm recording all of my travels and I'm reviewing restaurants. My channel's called Travel Snacks. And then he just kind of like, tr like he tried not to grin. But he was just like, okay. He's like, well, you don't have any accommodations here. And so that's why we had to pull you into this office. And I was like, okay, cool. And then he's like, can I have your keys? We're going to search your vehicle. And I was like, yo, okay. Like this is serious. So he's like, is there anything in your car that's going to poke us or stab us or anything? And I was like, no. And so he's like, okay. So I gave him my keys and then I just felt like violated. I'm like, oh my gosh, all my travel snacks are in there. All my stuff, all my camera stuff, just everything. It, it makes you feel weird to have somebody just going through your car, going through your stuff. And so, and they won't let you go out with them. So they could just do anything. I'm not, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. Canadian border people. I'm just saying like, it's just a bad feeling. He gets my keys. He walks outside him and the other Terminator type guy. He, they are like going through my things. I could kind of see outside and they were like going through my stuff. And so I was like, whatever, I ain't got nothing to hide. So it's fine. But I had my camera on the dashboard. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to like know that I filmed coming over the border and they're going to ask me to delete it. And I don't know if that's legal. And I can't look because I don't have my phone on me. I don't know what my rights are here in Canada. I was just like, whatever. If they ask me to delete the footage, I will. And so finally he comes back in. He's like, Miss Sharp, you can come up to the counter. So I go over there and he's like, okay, you're telling us that you have a YouTube channel and you're filming these travels. And I'm like, yes. He goes, what is the name of your channel again? I'm like, Travel Snacks. He goes, okay, I'm gonna look it up right now. And I'm like, cool. He's like looking and looking and I'm like, well, I'm not that popular yet. So you might have to just look it up under my name. He's like, no, I actually found you. So I was like, cool, I'm YouTube famous. So he looks it up and he's like, oh, okay. So you already have like 
over 50 videos. You're a California native. And I'm like, yeah, it's me. Okay. Like you see that I'm like a normal person. He's like, all right, well, you're pretty much good to go. And so he gets this big stamp out and he like stamps the paper. He's like, you can go. But just in the future, if you're going to be living out of your car, then you are going to want to bring proof of residency when you come over the border to Canada, if you ever come back. And I was like, well, I live with my parents when I'm in California. And then he's like, well, the first video in your YouTube channel is living in my car. <laughs> you right. <laughs> he wasn't giving me like a hard time. He was just kind of like, you know, it, it, you know, the video is saying one thing. And I was like, you got a good point. And he's like, good luck, have fun. And then he let me leave. And so then I had to give the yellow paper back to Terminator Rambo dude. And so he's like, have a good day. And I was like, you too. So then I got in my car and then I was like, super like, delicate to drive away and not break any of their laws because I'm like, okay, they let me into Canada, but I don't want to like ruin it. So I drove off and then I just drove straight into downtown Vancouver and it was beautiful and awesome. So it was well worth it. I did get detained at the border, but I think Canada must love travel snacks after all.